What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kyle. And I'm Hayley. And today we're talking all about the Isle of Skye. The Isle of Skye lies off the west coast of Scotland and is the largest island located within the Inner Hebrides. Known as the Misty Isle, it's famous for its rugged mountains and incredible waterfalls. With more sheep than people, this beautiful island has a vast untouched areas of natural beauty and provides some of the most dramatic mountain scenery Scotland has to offer. So starting our journey across Skye, we come to one of the more famous points of natural beauty, the Old Man of Storr. Located just north of Portree, within the Trotternish Peninsula, this incredible location will see you climb steadily up from the car park for approximately 20 to 30 minutes before reaching these famous jagged rocks. There's a fairly well maintained path that winds its way up the hillside and splits off into multiple different routes, allowing you to take in the incredible views from various vantage points. The towering rock spires here are truly unique and arguably the most famous on the island. This almost alien looking landscape was once featured as a set on the 2012 science fiction film Prometheus and it's not hard to see why. We spent a good couple of hours here, some of which was spent just simply sat taking in the incredible scenery and views. The Old Man of Stor stands in at 164 feet high and is so named due to the rock outline and the protruding pinnacle resembling an old man's face. The word Stor itself is actually Norse in origin and is thought to mean great man. As one of the most popular destinations on the island, you can expect it to get busy here during peak season, so we'd recommend arriving early to beat the crowds and get this incredible place all to yourself. Arriving at our second location, which is also known as Point of Sleet, this beautiful hidden beach is located in the southernmost point of sky. The beach is secluded and not the easiest to get to, with a good 30 minute walk to reach the coast. There is a small car park which can quickly fill up if you don't get there early, so parking can be a challenge, but if you manage it you'll be rewarded with your efforts. This incredible beach with tropical looking clear water with white sands definitely feel like you are somewhere in the Caribbean rather than Scotland. The beach itself isn't very large but there are lots to see and do here. 
rock pools are full of life and apparently further out to sea, dolphins, jellyfish and sea lions can all be seen from this stunning seaside location. There are no facilities out at this location so make sure you pack everything you need for a relaxing day at the beach. There are also some incredible views to be had up on the cliffs surrounding the bay should you want to venture up a little higher. This place really caught us by surprise and was well worth the effort getting there. Being so remote, there's a good chance you'll get the place to yourself and catch it on a blue sky day like we did. And this will be a beach trip to remember. Our third spot is another postcard location on the Isle of Skye. This is of course the famous Fairy Pools. Located in an area near Glenbrittle, this spot is not to be missed on your journey to the island. The gradual ascent to the pools is short and fairly easy going, but care should be taken when using the stepping stones along the way. Crossing the streams as you make your way up the well-laid gravel path, the multiple pools and waterfalls begin to come into view with this incredible mountain landscape. The source of the water comes from the black Coolin Mountains, which loom over you as you make your way up the trail. Crystal clear waters here attract people from all over the world, with many enjoying a spot of wild swimming for those who don't mind the icy waters. We enjoyed exploring the waterfalls, of which there are many different types of all shapes and sizes. The location is also popular with walkers and landscape photographers, both of which won't be disappointed with what's on offer here. We turned up early morning to beat the crowds, with the car park quickly filling up from 10am onwards. Although access to the pools is free, there's parking options located nearby, with a cost of £5 per car at the time of our trip. Alternatively, there is a free car park a little further up the road for those willing to walk down to the pools. Despite the crowds during peak season and the potential for some good old Scottish weather like we experienced, you don't want to miss this unique spot right here on the Isle of Skye.
Our fourth activity is something a little different which currently operates out of the Kyalakin area near the Sky Bridge in the south of the island. Sea Probe Atlantis is a boat tour with a difference and something we'd recommend to all of those of all ages looking for a unique experience on the Isle of Skye. Coming in at around £20 per adult, this trip promises some fantastic views of both Skye and mainland Scotland as it makes its way down La Couche. With a guide explaining everything we sailed past, during our trip we were treated with great views of some of the local seal population, who didn't seem to mind us as they were too busy napping on the rocks. The real surprise of this boat, however, is not just what can be seen above the waves, but also below. Sea Probe Atlantis is an award-winning glass bottom boat which offers panoramic views of the underwater world on sky. Bench seating is available below deck where you will experience a whole different world beneath the waves. We floated through the kelp forests, watched jellyfish slowly floating by and caught glimpses of crabs and starfish in this designated area of marine conservation. If you're looking for an unforgettable experience during your trip, we'd say this one was worth every penny and would highly recommend the Sea Probe Atlantis. So finally, we come to our last activity on our trip. This one sees us actually leave Skye for a smaller island off its east coast. Taking the Caledonian McBrain ferry across from Sconce costs around £3 for foot passengers or £20 for a car. Located only a two minute drive from the ferry port, our first stop is Raze House for cake and coffee. Although we didn't, you can hire bicycles from the house to help you get around the island. Our Airbnb hosts told us about a secret swing hidden within the grounds of the house. See if you can find it when you visit. Next up, we visited Raze Distillery and booked an outdoor whiskey tasting experience, coming in at around £10 per person. The whiskey tasting expert explained the history of Raze and the whiskey that's made there in their distillery.
There's only around 190 people who live on the island and approximately 30 of them work at this distillery. After the short tour of the grounds, it was finally time for a tasting. Both the gin and whiskey they make here is pretty good. After a short drive up the famous Callum's Road to the north of the island, we arrived at Brochil Castle. Built by the MacLeod clan to dominate the Isle of Raze, these 16th century ruins are pretty impressive. Sat below the castle is a pebble beach, which was one of the most relaxing and virtually silent beaches we've ever visited. We had the entire place to ourselves to relax and take in some of the views out at sea overlooking Applecross on the mainland. So that's the end of the video guys. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed putting it together for you. Uh, if we showed you something new or maybe helped you out with your trip to the Isle of Skye, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, leave us uh, your thoughts in the comments below. So if you enjoyed the video, please give us a big thumbs up and a share and it'll be much appreciated. And if you like the look of our faces and you wanna see more content just like this, hit that subscribe button too. Hopefully, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Peace.